This is the Nexus Special, Episode 40, Apple Fall Event 2015, on Sunday, September 13th, 2015. This Nexus Special is hosted by Brian Mitchell and Ryan Rampersad. This episode has show notes at thenexus.tv slash ns40. Hello and welcome to the Nexus Special, Episode 40. How unusual to say that. Yeah, we're, we're almost at the... Or I guess this is one of those birthday, like a birthday that leads up to right before you have your midlife crisis, right? Yeah, sort of like that. We're not quite there. We have a few more events to go. Mm-hmm. So, Apple had their fall iOS-ish event last week. And we got some things to talk about. Uh, three big things, in fact. Yes, so... Uh, they will just go in the keynote order. So we got iPad Pro, Apple TV, and iPhone. So, to start off with, the iPad Pro. So it's this new this new tablet that is much higher powered and with a 12.9 inch screen. So it's huge. It's giant. I My first MacBook was a 13 inch. And, well, on a computer that seems small. But on a tablet I think it seems huge. Because I'm used to using an iPad mini, mm-hmm. which is a nice 7.9 inch so it's much larger i would like to see one in person before i give my final say on it but it seems large and hopefully there's a market of people who will use it we'll have to talk about the market a little bit later because i think that's a really interesting thing to discuss yeah i know uh what's his name uh federico vitici Mm -hmm. he's at mac stories he is definitely buying one i think he's one of the people i know who tries to use an iPad exclusively for work over anyone else. So it'll be interesting to see what he says. So but, what's in the new iPad Pro? Well, let's go with some specs first. So they have the A9X chip, which is considering the line of, quote, desktop class performance. Um, so it's 1.8 times faster, um, I'm assuming, than the iPad Air 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were, it's much better in GPU as well. I think the graph I could find online was 360 times faster, but I think that's of the first generation iPad. That, that number makes it look really good, but I'm sure it's not yeah. that much better it's, than the previous one. It's, I think between, I don't know, it's maybe twice or a little under twice as good yeah. as on GPU. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has the motion coast processor, the M9, but now it's embedded inside of the A9X CPU rather than a separate chip. It's kind of funny and, that it's uh, in an iPad. Yeah, I well, I think they're using it now more for um, like people saying, hey, Siri, and oh, okay. things, because it's, it's a lower power, you know, they're just mm-hmm. extreme separating stuff. I think it um, has the option to be always on now, too. Nice. I don't necessarily know how all that works, but Hopefully it'll help with power. And then in um, finally, they have eight, uh, four gigabytes of RAM on iOS, which will be something to see, I think. Of course, the much larger display will use more, especially if they don't separate VRAM, but I'm, I have no idea how that works. Um, but I think they're future-proofing it. I don't, I don't know if they will release a new version every year. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I don't, it's, I don't think it's, they will. It's above that point in terms of price that people aren't going to buy a new one. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they also update MacBooks all the the time, too. I think it it might be under the assumption that people are going to upgrade less frequently. So they need a little more stuff in there to have it last a lot longer. Yeah, I wonder about that. Um, You know, I I guess it's kind of like one of those... um watches sort of like uh will the watch update every year will the ipad pro update every year will the products people buy less update every year yeah i'm not sure that'll be interesting to see because i think like the apple watch also has half gig of ram which is probably a bit overkill right now for the watch but if it's gonna last a few years they need to have more yeah um it has your standard wi-fi bluetooth um, 802.11 AC and Bluetooth 4.2, just like the iPad Air 2. Um, it, they, you know, Apple has notoriously had the 16 gigabyte as the entry price level, but the iPad Pro has escaped that with 32 gigabytes for $749. And then skipping anything between and jumping right to 128 gigabyte for 
nine hundred forty nine dollars. Well, that's with, a big yeah. jump. Yeah, another. Wait, no, hold on. Is that right? I thought it was only one hundred fifty. I'm not sure. Still a big jump. Oh, yeah, the notes will be right. We'll look it up. Yeah. Um, and then the the one twenty eight gigabyte model can also have uh, LTE for a total of one thousand seventy nine dollars. I know that price is right. I copied that one in. Yeah. So, what do you think about that 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 uh, pricing margin there? Um, I think it's good that they're not charging two hundred dollars more for one twenty eight, but still one fifty is a little hefty. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it's not a horrible amount more. And when you're already going to be paying seven fifty for it, or was it eight hundred? It might be eight hundred. I don't remember. Um, I, I think if you need a one twenty eight over thirty two, it makes sense. According to the uh, specs page, it is nine forty nine for one twenty eight. Okay, then I'm assuming nine forty nine. Sorry. Yeah. So what is thirty two? Must be not seven ninety nine then. So eight hundred nine fifty. It's a bit of a jump. I don't think it's the worst thing, but at the same time, it kind of you kind of almost want to only buy the one twenty eight gigabyte version because thirty two. Especially with something that large, it's gonna yep. the number of assets. You know, when you, need you for uh, it. when you're drawing your 4K illustrated graph, it's gonna yeah, take think, some space. Yeah, apps are gonna be huge. If you if you want to play 4K video or something on there, mm-hmm. it's just gonna be tiny. Yeah. So what about um, um, the uh, peripherals? Yeah. So following Microsoft's lead, I, I will say Apple has also released what they call the Apple Pencil, as well as the keyboard cover. So if you follow Microsoft, the Surface has this stylus that lets you draw on the screen. It has a couple buttons on it. And then there's also a keyboard that clips in and acts as a stand and cover and keyboard, just like the Apple keyboard cover will. So the the Pencil is an input device. Um, It works with the touchscreen, but it also has intelligent computer parts inside the pencil so it can detect how hard the user is pushing down on it and then the angle of, of which it's pushing onto the screen so it can simulate a pencil as if you you know you're drawing on a side of a pencil with it not quite horizontal but pretty close it'll do very wide as if you're it's you know simulating a pencil i would get outside yeah i think it's pretty cool uh they said that it does um double data entry onto the tablet surface like so basically, they say more points are getting input into the system, which I think is pretty cool. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a precision device. Yeah, and I was looking on Twitter. There was some talk when Apple announced the iPad Air two. It they said I think it was double as precise for touch um, and how often it checks for where the new point is for your finger. Mm-hmm. I think it was up to one twenty hertz, up from sixty. That's pretty good per second, and. And so then with the iPad Pro, it'll be at 240, which is a lot of checks per second. So, mm-hmm. And you should I be think... able to get some pretty accurate uh, designs there. It'll be interesting to see if somebody can figure out a way to test it and then see if it's true. Yeah, I think I think the, the pens for probably the pretty small amount of people who use their iPads for drawing and doing artwork, things like that, I think it will be very nice for them. I don't know how helpful it will be for the general average user but i think the styles will be interesting to see how it well works. i guess it's more than just people who draw too i mean the people who also do just ipad writing which is probably less people than the drawing even uh but they'll probably enjoy it too yeah i think at a hundred dollars it's gonna be a little bit of a a jump because i i bought this amazon basic stylus for seven dollars i don't use it very much but i mm-hmm. occasionally will so I don't know. I think the pencil's also it's a finer point, so it's easier to use. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it works. It seems pretty cool, and I'm sure Apple puts their their hard work into it. So it'll it'll probably have a not, not their hard work, but you know, it'll like most Apple products, it works pretty well. Mm-hmm. Which I think it will have much better performance than the traditional stylus. So what about that cover? Keyboard cover. Yes. So this uses a new, I'm assuming magnetic three pin connector on the on the, I guess, side of the iPad, which when you're in horizontal is on the bottom. And so it's a smart cover with a keyboard built in. So you can use it as a stand and type on it at the same time. 
this looks exactly like the Microsoft Surface kind of thing. Um, yeah, when when the keynote was going on, it, there was this, a flow of tweets for a minute or two about, you know, comparing the Surface and the iPad Pro. And I mean, I'm sure that's where they took some inspiration from, but it's it's not the nicest looking thing when folded up, though. So it's, it's you know, a smart cover has three panels on an iPad, but this has three panels plus the iPad, the keyboard. So the keyboard folds underneath, creating an extra bulge on mm-hmm. two thirds of the screen cover. Yeah, so, I saw somebody doing a video um, in the demo room of the cover folding, and it's like that looks funny. Yeah. So, it, you know, I guess they're doing what they can, but it's it's hard to get right, and I don't know. This is what they have, and so hopefully it'll work. So, what what do you think about the idea of Apple selling a uh, first party keyboard cover? I think it that only I might add works. For the most expensive type of iPad. Yes, I think it'll it'll be perfect for the diehard fans who go out and buy the 120 gigabyte with LTE and mm-hmm. the pencil. Exactly. And this cover. $2,000 iPad Pro in the end. Yeah. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's almost $1,300 to get a fully decked out iPad Pro. Well, because is... cause you need to buy AppleCare too, of course. Oh, yeah. And then and then your, your sales tax... But free shipping, it's okay. Oh, you right, because you wouldn't go to the store. Yeah, you need, you need to uh, overnight ship it. Right, okay, maybe. Um, I guess that's not free. Um, I think it'll work. Uh, I think it's $100, which if you're thinking about buying a case and a keyboard, that's not too bad. If you buy you know, a nice quality case and a nice quality keyboard separately, I don't know. I mean, there are some combo cases, but they seem kind of bulky. They're really plasticky. They're hard. They're not quite as fluid as mm-hmm. the Apple one. So I think also I think the keyboard cover and or the yeah, keyboard cover. Oh uh, the, more the cover is one sixty nine. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Well I was gonna say at a hundred dollars I would probably buy it. One sixty nine, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I've never used a keyboard with my iPad, so Yeah, I still don't. I'm not convinced. I mean for that price, why aren't you just buying an eleven min eleven inch MacBook Air? Or the new MacBook One. I mean, I just don't know. Yeah, and I think each each operating system has a lot to, to offer too. Between and so, you know, you might want an iPad Pro and a MacBook Air 11 inch mm-hmm. to do everything. You I don't know. May, uh, maybe I don't, I just don't know. I hope I hope iOS progresses eventually to be a lot easier of a choice for people, so they can be like, oh, I'll, I only need an iPad versus I want only an iPad, but I might need a computer. Because I think that's where a lot of people are today. I mean, if you're debating if you need a computer or not, you probably don't need one. True. I I debate that, though, sometimes when I'm going to class. I I rarely bring my computer to class. I mean, it's... No, no, no. I don't, I don't mean to, like, bring with you. I mean to own, to have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's just, like, the... I knew a bunch of people who were getting MacBooks before going to school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they see the MacBook. Oh, there's no CD drive. So they buy the old crappy those, hardware, those hard drive people, MacBook. Oh man, with, those poor with people. Drives. They don't know what they're doing. I think it's a lot easier to convince people nowadays, but just a couple of years ago, yeah. you, you really couldn't. Well, I, I, I for sure have noticed too. So uh, this time around, I've seen a lot of people having the uh, Retina Display 13 inch instead of a MacBook yeah. Air. I'm, I'm seeing that too. There's a lot more common. The like people a year below me have a lot more than my year, and yep. people two years below way more. And it, then this year's incoming class, I don't see anyone because I'm here. But it I'm probably helped that the price dropped pretty drastically. Yeah, and I think people kind of see that. Oh, it's slimmer. Look at the screens better. It's kind of going to push them enough to do it. Any last thoughts about the iPad? No, I think that's about it for now. We'll see how it goes in November when everybody gets theirs. That's true. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. We'll see. So how about an Apple TV? Yes. So after three years of Apple TV third generation, which was a very small upgrade from the second generation, which is from 2010, I want to say, we now have the fourth generation Apple TV, also not also known as the new Apple TV. So, for perspective, the uh, the you know the previous generation Apple TV was using the A5, 
which had multiple shrinks or alterations to it, which is the same A5 that was in the iPad 2, which was an atrocity and an abomination. And it's the same A5 in the iPhone 4S. Just, just Although I think, cry. I think yeah. the Apple TV ones, there's a new um, revision of the third yep. generation. I think that included Bluetooth 4 over Bluetooth 2. or I'm not quite sure what it was, but I don't know if they changed the CPU at all there. But at one point, at least, the yeah, third gen used an A5 with one of the cores turned off. So I think it was a recycle use for a lot of bad A5 CPUs. Yeah. That at the time, we're being made. But now we have a fourth generation with... And it's uh, fancy. Um, yeah, it's it looks the same. It's just a little taller. Um, so it's running an A8 CPU, which is from last year. So the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus used the A8 and the iPad Air 2, but not the X version. Um, two gigabytes of RAM, 8211 AC up from N on the second, third gen. Um, it comes in either 32 or 64 gigabyte storage for 149 or 199, um, which is interesting because it's they're, they're changing their the uses of the Apple TV, as I'll get to in a minute. The second, third gen were, I think, just had 8 gigabytes on and were just for streaming. They didn't really have... It was like a cache area. Yeah. And especially in the last couple of years, Apple's on the fly, just pushed tons and tons of new channels. And so if you didn't hide them, you would have probably upwards of 50 or 60 or 70 squares in your screen of all these different content providers. Mm-hmm. So it's getting a little a little out there, I think. And so now with this, it's running tvOS, and, which is a version of iOS. And so it, it can have native apps. It has a new interface on the home screen with some parallax effects of scrolling through with this awesome new glass touchpad remote. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's about time they retire their old aluminum remote. So this has like a a glass touch screen kind of thing with no, sorry, no, no screen, a glass touch surface with a, I don't have it in front of me, but like at this menu button, a home button volume up and down, which is a new feature. I'll get into in a second. And um, what am I? Th- well, so there's menu. There's, there's, there's a, a Siri sc- button, a screen button. That, yeah, Siri button, pause, play, and volume up and down. Yeah. Oh, and of course, there's a microphone on the top. Yes. To hear you with it, with a lightning connector in that whole thing. So <sighs> it, yeah. they say it'll last, uh, I think, three three four months with typical use, which is maybe three hours a day for every day. Yeah, I, I, think. I, I could. See, I mean, you're not in. using it constantly unless you're playing games, so that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. And it doesn't have a screen to power it, so it's going to be pretty efficient. I mean, and it connects with, or you go. They could they could make any product with a glass touchpad, and I would probably just buy it just for the glassness. I I just yeah. love glass on my products. It is it's nice, and I think the the bottom isn't glass; it's just the top. Yep, so it's a nice top. a nice mix. Of, you know, it's right where your thumb goes. Yeah, I think I think it'll work pretty well. And then I think the the parallax and kind of sliding effect works in the in the operating system works pretty well mm-hmm. with sliding your thumb on the on the glass surface yeah. a lot more than the the buttons because there's also the Apple Remote app which you used to be able to you still can connect to your Apple TV and just swipe left and right to simulate the the buttons on the remote and it was it would work but it it would often you know slide slide over more or less than you wanted to and you kind of have to go around and I'm hoping. TVOS will help that a bit. Mm-hmm. I also think it's interesting that the uh, little remote isn't called the little remote. It's called the Siri remote. Yeah, I think they're they're pushing for that. I don't know what what is what's has done something like this. Isn't it the Amazon? Um, yeah, the Amazon um, ask Amazon thing. Yeah, the whatever is not the Fire Stick, is it? That's the well, phone. Well, y- no, the Fire Phone is the phone. The Fire Stick is one, and there's also the Fire TV. I think. Okay. Yeah, they yeah, they have a lot of them. Fine. It also has um, an accelerometer and gyroscope for the gaming portion of it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see what what comes out there. I, I don't. I feel like there's going to be an initial round of games, and then if nothing's successful, which I kind of imagine at least at the beginning, it's not going to be too much. Then it's going to be swamped with 
easy ports of iOS games. Well, you know they're going to make every Fruit Ninja possible and every Angry Birds possible, but what is the, you know, the game that everybody wants on the platform? And I don't know if there's going to be one for a while. I'm sure Minecraft will make it too. I mean, I guess so. There's not a whole lot of buttons there for Minecraft. I I don't play Minecraft, so I don't know how button heavy sure. it is. I know I know it's on Xbox and PlayStation as well. I mean, but. so did they? I don't know if you you picked up on it, but did they mention that you could use a different peripheral for the controller? Yep the the made for iOS or the MFI certified controllers okay. can work with. That's with good then. Too. Still so, though, I don't know if anybody is going to do it. Yeah, and and, and they, everyone has to support using the Siri remote, mm-hmm. even if they also support game controllers. So right. it's it's going to be interesting to see. Um, so it has the HDMI 1.4 connector and a USB C for service and I guess for storing on iTunes, mm-hmm. which is up from using micro USB and your AC power in. But they have no more the SPDIF uh, Toslink connector, so no more fiber out. Surround sound. That's kind of sad. Yeah, I I bought an adapter for my third gen. I wonder I why it. they took that out. Yeah, I think space probably internally, maybe heat, because hmm. it was you know an LED light pulsing all the time, which generates a little heat, not a ton. I don't put a, know. Put probably a fan new audio it. encoding too. Maybe, or maybe they just know. figured that nobody used it. I'm I'm sure there's uh, a lot of Apple TVs out there that have never used it. Yeah, that's true. I I also think it might have something to do with the volume buttons that are on the remote now because mm, right. it's using new HDMI, I think, protocols or standards that can control the volume of the media instead of just your TV remote. Yeah, that makes a lot so, of sense, actually. And I think the SPDIF Toslink kind of standard is just sending audio. It's not sending volume as well. So... I think to kind of combat that, they just said, okay, I'm just going to remove it. And yeah, I, I would agree with you that I doubt many people used it in the end. Mm-hmm. Because HDMI can do surround sound just like that connector can, just not quite as direct. Right. So, so you do audio out from your TV, except from the, the Apple TV. So with all the people who have Apple TV 3s, which is the last one made, what are they going to do with them all? Do you think do, do you think a lot of people will actually do the upgrade or will they just, eh, you know, this HBO Now app works just fine for me right now. I don't care. Oh, this Netflix app works just fine for me now. I don't care. It will be interesting to see if the current content providers keep supporting it or not. Mm. Um, if, you know, they send messages saying, okay, this app is no longer going to work in another month. You need to upgrade. I don't know. But, I feel like a lot of people would complain really heavily yeah, if Netflix... I, I, I don't think we're going to get there. It, for quite a while, yeah, but it might get there someday. I know. The I think Apple would probably get there sooner. Yeah, yeah. The second generation is no longer receiving software updates. Mm-hmm. Right, that makes um, sense. The A four, so it stopped in what? Uh, when did iOS six? That was what two thousand twelve? No, yeah, no thirteen. I don't even remember. Whenever yeah. iOS seven came out, that's okay. Second gen stopped, um, and that still works. Uh, so we'll see. I don't think they will get the same software that the new one gets. Mm-hmm. They'll just stay with their old. I mean, the only other thing mean. I could think of having the three around for at this point. So if you bought one of the new ones, the new Apple TV, um, you could kind of use it as like um, kind of a, like a Apple TV mirroring. So instead of having multiple Apple TVs, you could kind of like stream it to a different room or something. I guess that would be kind of cool. So what, like out of one Apple TV to another? Or are yeah. you saying just one? Okay. Yeah, I think, especially with airplane things, the mm-hmm. old ones might sell pretty well because they'll be cheaper. Yeah. And if someone needs a real quick, easy. So are they, are they still going to sell the old ones? I don't think so. Yeah, okay. Well, I, haven't I don't know. Anymore. The site doesn't list the old one anymore, other than mm-hmm. it's support articles. So I think I'll get one. I think the App Store will be really powerful and... People have been hoping for an app store for Apple TV for years. So I think people have had enough time to sit on the ideas they might be having. So, so did, did this implementation, did it live up to the hype generated by the Steve Jobs book when they, he said that he cracked it? Uh, 
I don't know. I don't think this is this isn't cracking. This is I mean it's the same Apple TV with a more buttons. third party app store. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just it's following along with the market with mm-hmm. having voice dictation. Um I don't think it's anything I don't it's not cracking it. Yeah. That's pretty much my thoughts exactly. So you know, maybe they did, they're still negotiating. I think them cracking it will be a um a Netflix type model that has more content and I don't know yeah. family sharing. We'll see. I don't know, who knows? So iPhones. Yes. So the the brand new iPhone six S and six S plus. Oh my gosh. So many little pieces of that name now. Yes. So um to start off they announced I don't even know if to start off, but they have new colors. Um with rose gold to match the oh what was it what is what was rose gold was that an apple watch yeah the gold the high-end gold apple watch has a rose gold model and so now it comes actually they we forgot to list this but the apple watch added new bands and a rose gold uh, aluminum color so that's that's a thing and to match that the iphone 6s and 6s plus can now be in rose gold as well um I'm just going to start with physical things here first. So compared to the 6 and 6 Plus, the 6S is 0.2 millimeters taller and thicker and 0.1 millimeters wider. And the 6S Plus is 0.1 millimeters taller, wider, and thicker. Are you telling and me Apple isn't shrinking things? They are, No, they are not. I think actually they, I saw on Twitter, they they, are, they shrunk the capacity of the battery just a, just a little bit. Wow. <laughs> well, that's that's just great. So, wow. so we'll see how that plays out. Mm-hmm. And then the 6S is 143 grams versus the 129 that was in the 6. And the 6S Plus is 192 versus the 172 in the 6 Plus. So that is due to the 7000 series aluminum they're using, which is a much stronger aluminum alloy. So this is probably in response to the bend gate. Is no more bend gate? Guess not. Mine's a little bent. I'd go for some 7,000. You know, my Nexus 6 is not bent at all. That thing is a giant phone. It's pretty thick, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is un- unusually and unacceptably thick, really. So that's, that's Only why. because I have the case on it. I mean, without the case, I mean, it's not really much thicker than uh, the 6 Plus. Yeah. I will say, I'm without the case in a screen protector, the 6 is just such a thin phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, so, I couldn't hold the Nexus 6 without the case. I just couldn't do it. It's too thin. Yeah. Well, I think it's about time they become a little thicker and a little better battery, hopefully. Yeah, but what what battery? You don't need battery. <sighs> my battery is so bad. I, I If I'm doing much, I just have to go charge it. And I charged my phone two and a half times yesterday. Man, it, yeah. It hurt. Mm-hmm. Although I was traveling and got up early and low still, signal. But. Still, though. So, um, some new features on the 6S and 6S Plus. So, other other than color and tiny size differences, the external looks the same. There's a new 12 megapixel eyesight camera. So, after, uh, since, what was it, the iPhone 4S, it's been 8, mega, eight megapixels. And I think it was Tim Cook or Phil Schiller said that they wouldn't increase the megapixel count until they thought that the picture quality was good enough. And so I guess now is that time. So we get 12 megapixel, which means we also get 4K at 30 frames per second. And like the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, the last generation, you can also do 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second. Mm -hmm. And then that brings the panorama up to a giant 63 megapixel. Big enough? Yeah, I guess if you want, you know, 50 megabyte images. Sure. It's within... No reason yeah, to no reason to fill iCloud up faster, or the sixteen gigabyte base model that they're still selling. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I I uh, again on I go back to Twitter. I'm a big Twitter user. Follow me at Tech Four Seven Eight Nine. Just about hey. everywhere. <laughs> uh, but people were saying, you know, I think it was two or three years ago. People were quoting articles of people complaining about this when the 5s or when the 5s came out why the 60 gigabyte model was still a thing and here we are with 4k video 12 megapixel images 16 gigabyte 
Yeah, I have that same problem. I was uh, on vacation over a Labor Day weekend, and I took tons of pictures on my Nexus 6. And it's a 32 gig phone, and I had to, or it asked me to remove pictures twice. Because mm-hmm. it, it knows they're all backed up, so it, it just took care of it for me. But man, it, it really does suck to have such a small space. Yeah, and you know, it's it's one thing to run out of space when you have a ton of stuff on there. Like, okay, I can delete a lot of this. But it's another thing when you've done that many times, and you're like, this is as small as I can get things, and exactly. it's still not enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like Apple isn't trying to help you. You know, they have all the syncing, so you can, you know, offload some of it. They have app thinning now, so that you know, presumably you'll eventually be able to have less app stuff on your phone. So they're they're yeah. they're they are helping a little, but not enough. And I think in the end, you know, they they removed the thirty two gigabyte option last year, and so you just do a hundred dollars more, and you get all the way up to sixty four. That's what I did. I think I don't know. I think I have like. 29 gigabytes free i think a lot of people are going to do that i i hope so but there are people who just barely want to spend the extra hundred dollars to get the newest one versus last year's model those poor people convincing convincing them to get an even another hundred dollars i don't know if people will do it but they don't know what they're missing yeah it's such a nice thing to have when you can have whatever you want on there okay um, so, like the iPad Pro, there's also the A9 CPU. Uh, I saw a site where they said there was someone who ran a Geekbench 3 benchmark, and it was clocked at 2 gigahertz. That's pretty impressive. Do not, I don't know how accurate that is at all. We'll have to see in the next few days or when it's released. But it's 70% faster CPU and 90% faster GPU versus the previous iPhone. And it, the A9 features a new transition transistor architecture. I don't really know what that means. I don't think it's a new like ARM thing, a new ARM architecture, but probably some hardware level thing, I yeah. guess, that lets them do more stuff. And that, that same article also suggested that they're using a 14 nanometer process and that pretty, last pretty year's A8, A8 was 20. So mm-hmm. who knows? Yeah, Apple's pushing the uh, the boundaries there on the uh, the CPUs and their chips. Yeah, you, I, I don't know. At least I kind of forget that they're designing their own CPUs. And so, you know, they make this great hardware and this great software, yet they also make these super powerful chips that are competing with, the, you know, NVIDIA, Tigras, and the Snapdragon. You know, and, it's not hard to compete with either of those because they all suck. See, I don't know anything about mobile CPUs other than Apple's. Uh, the Snapdragons, what are those? And the Tegras? <laughs> eh, whatever. Is there anything else? Or is that um, really all there is? There's MediaTek, there's Kirin, something. It, so so Snapdragon and Tegra, those are the two other primary chips. Uh, then you have Samsung with their Xenios line. That's only for Samsung, though. And then you have a bunch of sort of kind of Chinese knockoffs, so All Winner, uh, MediaTek, uh, Kirin. There you okay. go. Mm-hmm. And in the case of the Zenfone, you have Intel. Yeah, right. So then you have Intel, and so there's there's Apple and Intel, and there's pretty much everybody else at this point because Qualcomm screwed up. Yeah. And what what did Qualcomm make? Qualcomm makes the Snapdragons, and okay. two years ago the Nexus Five came out with a Snapdragon 800, and since then we've only managed to get up to a Snapdragon. 810 which if you haven't heard had overheating issues so they had to go back to the drawing board so they haven't released a new cpu not of a comparable jump compared to apple or really anybody else okay Mm -hmm. Hmm. interesting yeah well i think you know they're probably also struggling with large feature sets and not having as much control over it all i think apple being first party everything it helps definitely So hopefully Intel can win and pick up the slack. Yeah. So I'll go back to the iPhone now. Um, (laughs) In addition to the 12 12 megapixel eyesight camera, we also have a 5 megapixel FaceTime camera. So our selfies will now be actually nice resolution versus whatever 1.2 they had before. I'm I'm not even excited for myself, really, because I don't take front-facing photos very much. But You're just happy just, for everybody else. 
I'm happy for being able to see photos that are a little better on yeah. the internet mm-hmm. because that's it's all that people take nowadays, it seems. Yep. And uh, they're bringing a what they call the Retina Flash, so this matches the the True Tone LED flash on the eyesight camera, but on the Retina display, so it'll flash matching the room lighting. So I, th- I thought this was a pretty cool um, software gimmick they could use here. Like, oh, well, we'll just use the screen as the flash. We don't need an actual flashed LED. Um, the uh, new Moto X Play or something has a literal LED flash on the front of it, and it's bizarre. That is, yeah, that's strange. Because there are some apps that will do a front-facing fa- flash for you. They just flash the screen white, overlaying the camera yeah. UI. Mm-hmm. And so it'll, you know, there is that, but that's super harsh. And I think matching color is natively is a nice feature that yeah will be nice to have hopefully now apps that have a third you know their third party camera gui will be able to use that flash without hopefully we'll see um so let's see they also have a new second generation touch id which is i think double the speed or something like that good improvements to have um two gigabytes of ram Oh, good, didn't, good, good didn't they have. say they have a new glass or something on the screen? It's X glass or something? The Ion X glass? Yeah. I didn't hear that, but that would make sense because that's the, what they have on the Apple Watch. Because, so I, yeah, Ion X, right. Um, I remember, remember it in the no- keynote, but I don't know what it, any, I don't see it anywhere else. Hmm. Yeah, I, I must have missed that then. Interesting, yeah. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be. Small, stronger or something. I don't know if or when they have stopped using Gorilla it's Glass. It's not Sapphire. Oh, no. <laughs> those those rumors kind of went away when the Apple Watch came out. Yeah. They would all have Sapphire screens. Um, they have LTE Advanced for up to, I don't know, 150 or something megabit per second LTE, which is nice. Wi-Fi with MIMO. I have no idea what that is. But yeah. it's a Wi-Fi feature, apparently. Oh, multiple input, multiple output. Probably more multi-band, but an official standard, mm-hmm. I would guess. Yep. Um, yeah, let's see. They have Bluetooth 4.2 over 4.0. And then they announced their own update program. Do you Which want to is, talk about that? Yeah, yeah, I can talk about it. I think it's pretty cool, actually. So this is the iPhone upgrade program. And it's a new phone. Well, this is their slogan. A new iPhone every year. And the coverage you want from apple care um so i guess how it works is after 12 installments you can get a new iphone and start the same program over again and um the payments aren't you know super egregious they're almost sort of reasonable especially if you don't have to necessarily tie it to a carrier and you could go prepaid or something you know for lower Mm -hmm. lower data rates or something and you get an unlocked phone too so Right. I guess if you ever decide to stop early, you don't have to go through unlocking it. Yeah, as pre- um, especially presuming, you know, you actually don't have a contract. I mean, that's the hard part. So so here's here's what it says here. So low monthly payments. Now, this is the part where it gets sort of confusing. You can spread the cost over 24 months with the option to get an iPhone after 12 payments. So does that mean, what does that mean? That means you don't have to upgrade if you don't want to. So if you like your iPhone 6 Plus S, G, you don't have to <laughs> change it. You could, but you don't have to. So yeah. the the pricing is really good. So we'll, we'll go with the more expensive uh, 6S Plus model. Um, the uh, 16 gigabyte is thirty six fifty eight per month. So $37. The 64 gig is only a few dollars more. $41 a month and the 128 is only a few dollars more at $45 a month. Yeah. So this I think also kind of reflects what carriers are doing now where you just, you, you buy the phone in whole and just pay it off split over a set amount of time. So I think I what, saw... um, I think what they do here is you pay, you know, your $45 a month for a year and that next year you sell the phone back to them basically to, you know, settle the balance, and then they give you a new one. Yeah. So I think this plan is going to be, it's it's nice for a couple of reasons. So you're away from carriers, which is, hooray, because no one likes to deal with them. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you also get Apple Care. But the thing is, if you don't upgrade every year, I don't know if it's quite worth it, especially if you weren't going to get Apple Care yep. initially. Because in the end, you're paying for the phone and hole plus Apple Care over 24 months. That's true. Which is okay if you're planning on buying a phone every two years with Apple Care. But if you're buying through a carrier, you can get, uh, I know at least with AT&T, you can do a similar kind of plan and upgrade in either 12, 18, or 20 or 24 or something like that. And they split it up over that long of a period. And so if you do that model, you can also upgrade. You have to turn in your old phone, of course, probably Apple with, with Apple too, but you don't have to pay for Apple care there. Mm-hmm. So it's, it seems like escaping the carrier, but you have to, you have to get warranty as well, which is probably something Apple is pushing to get a little more money. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool that they're offering it. Um, if um, Google did something similar to this with the Nexus line, I would almost certainly partake in that. I think it's really cool that you can just pay some amount of money for a period of time, get a new phone after another period of time. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of the um, Apple fans that we know would almost want to do it, too, um, if they uh, weren't already locked into their contracts. Mm-hmm. Um I know with with like AT and T at least because that's who I have with their AT and T Next plan where you do this monthly thing you are not in a contract so you can pay off the price of the phone and be done whenever you want and so that's that's what I did when I came here so I could unlock my phone mm-hmm. but come to Denmark I should say more so. for those listeners who aren't following every move I do but everybody you should follow him every move please don't. <laughs> I don't know if my Twitter location uses specific points or just center of city. You'll find out. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, I, I might eventually do the yearly update thing because it sounds like a, a nice way of having, I don't know, new phone every year sounds nice. And if I you know pay the same amount, it just kind of blends together. But another thing is I'd have to turn in my old phone, I'd assume. And I like keeping the old ones around. It's fun to play around with and see. Yeah, that is true. Older versions. And, and, you know, maybe I just have to accept the fact and move on. But Well, so I guess what you could do is, um, you know, you, you, you get into this program and then two years, you know, two years later, every two years or so, you'll be able to get one of the, uh, you know, one, one of the, a similar model to you had two years ago for like 40 bucks somewhere in a bargain bin. That's true. That might be a little cheaper than realistic, but yeah, yes, it's the same, same. Yeah. I don't know. It may not be worth it to me at that point. And really, I, I never use my iPhone four. I use my iPhone five actually quite a bit right now, but I mean, it's, it's decoration. Yeah. Well, I, I should say in here in Denmark, I use it any new place I go. I have it with me because I have, I have this app called fog of world. Yep. Plug in this app that tracks everywhere I go. And in a fog of war style, but on the earth. And since my iPhone 5 doesn't have cellular, I don't have to worry about going into other countries and things. And it has a GPS, so I just hit record, throw it in a bag, and let it go all day. And it's probably dead when I get home, but it tracked me all day. Mm-hmm. And that's fun. So, I don't know. And that might work a little while longer on that phone or my 6 in the future. But Yeah, I think this this iPhone is a... Oh, wait, we totally forgot about the biggest topic of the phone, 3D Touch. Oh, is that a topic? Oh, no. Wow. Yeah, how did we forget that? <laughs> I should add it to the list before we forget. I don't even know if their page said much about it. Hold on. Yeah, okay, it's the first bullet point. Okay. Well, so much we for that. Past that. How do we forget that? Okay, right, so well, here's the deal. You can peek and pop. <laughs> peek, pop. So it's it's you know, it sounds like a rebranding of Force Touch. That in that the screen can detect how hard you're pushing, and it sounds like there are two modes with the iPhone. You know, like a hard press and a very hard press. In contrast to just a tap on the screen, and so they demoed in several apps like Messages, where you'd press a little bit on the screen and it would show a preview of it peaking, and then you push even harder and it pops into that view. And so it seemed kind of cool. You know, they showed also Instagram in like a grid view where you peek on a photo that's pretty small, just a thumbnail and it blows it up to the full size version or nearly full size. 
seems like a cool a cool way of doing it. I think it'll it's a bit more efficient with menu navigation. So rather than tapping something going all the way to the top left, when you're holding it in your right hand, you kind of have to rearrange your grip to get up there sometimes. Mm-hmm. Let's use reachability or something. And so I think it'll be a nice feature to have. And they showed some cool things on the home screen too, where you can launch apps into a certain state. Yeah, I think that is pretty cool. Um, Ian Buck was asking, how, how, how does it differ from just a regular long press? Um, so iOS previously or currently still. So if you, if you hold your finger down on something, so like on the home screen, of course, on an icon, it turns it into wiggle mode, which is where you can rearrange or uninstall apps. Um, otherwise in other apps, so like in Tweetbot, for example, if you hold your, your finger on a tweet, it will pull up the share sheet. And like on Facebook, if you hold your finger over text in a status update or something, it'll, it'll offer to copy that text. And so any, basically any text in the operating system, you hold your hand on it, it'll select that word or the paragraph and offer to select, select all or copy or paste or cut or something. And sometimes you can define it, define a word too. And so that's that's basically the contextual menu that was added in iPhone OS 3. And it hasn't really changed much since they added define, I think, in iOS 5. And since then, it's pretty much been the same. So I think they can't really change how long presses work because they have this whole other system they have to do, with, do something with. Mm-hmm. So 3D Touch lets you take a little further and you know some things that i don't know what android does on long presses at all but some very similar to ios long press okay so it i guess it will it will allow you to do further things that you might imagine a long press could do so you know open an app in a different state you know basically your your options menu on whatever content you are so i think it's a i think it's a cool thing and there's like there's a game i don't even remember the name but they demoed playing it where you could press harder on the screen and it would zoom yeah. the camera into it that point. It was the um, sort of like shooting game thing. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot some, you're in a giant robot shooting some enemies. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And you push Oh, and you change the, the weapon by pressing harder or not. Yeah, going from like a machine gun to a rocket launcher. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so that seems cool because I know like in a game, any timing is very critical. And if, if it takes, takes a little longer to move your thumb, tap a change uh weapon button and they go back so you can kind of think about it for games too uh it'd be pretty interesting like it's a game sort of almost of skill like if you have to have really fast swipes but you also want to use your really powerful thing which requires the force touch you're almost building in a friction yeah it it adds (laughs) literally adds depth to the game whoa does it add depth (laughs) 3d and, you know, things where, you know, you have a swipe and a tap currently, but a swipe and a tap could be the same kind of thing, whereas you have a, a push that does the other option. So I think it, it can add some safety to things. I'm I'm very excited to use this. Yeah, I think it'll be really there. cool. And I think, you know, third-party apps are going to use this, so when people have cool ideas, there'll be a new... I think new standards that apps will have. I mean, I, I like that on the home screen, you know, it has a really consistent, simple use. You can jump into different activities really fast. Um, mm-hmm. I could see a lot of use for that even on Android. Um, and I, I, I wonder though with, with um, I mean, they're, they're marketing it. So, I mean, hopefully it'll get, you know, adopted by normal people in use, but I wonder how many people will use it in terms of, I was watching the video, like you, you force, press on a message in mail and it will pop up a little bit and then if you keep if you do the second level of press it will expand fully and i wonder how many people will actually use it as demonstrated mm-hmm. or will they just click on the little arrow to open the email like normal yeah i think well i've used force touch at my apple watch and on there you know i can so on the notification center for example if i if I just tap a little bit, it selects one item in the list. Where if I push down and activate kind of a force touch, it offers a clear all button. And so it's it's almost easier to just push down and tap rather than tap and tap. Yeah. 
it's about the same. It just you're going into it more, and it and it justifies the time that you're putting into whatever it is. And at the same time, maybe it, it does take more time. So we'll we'll have to we'll have to see how it actually ends up working. I noticed in the videos there's still like a a long press amount of delay, if you know what I mean, mm-hmm. um, between when the action expands the thing the first time and when it completely expands the second time. Yeah. And I'm sure it's detecting variability. Yeah. Because it, it can probably detect everything. They just have thresholds and right. timers. And I'm that. sure that's even somewhat configurable, just like how it is on the trackpad on the MacBook One. Yeah. I I was on a bus full of people who aren't tech people at all, and I told them about 3D Touch. And one person was like, why is that a thing? Why does Apple just keep adding useless features? I mean, it, it it's not useless. It just doesn't yeah, revolutionize just- anything. Maybe my explanation was poor, but yeah, you yeah. know, you need to do take some risks and make new features. And I, don't, I think it'll be exciting to see. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. All right, anything else? I don't think so. Of course, this is how we always end the show. Com- yes. Compare this, you know, iPad and iPhone and Apple TV event to an equivalent event previously. How did they do? I think this is a very good event. I, I didn't have a lot of expectations. I knew they were going to talk about iPad, iPhone, and Apple TV. but And I think Mark Mark Gurman for 9to5Mac had predicted a lot of this, but I hadn't kept in too much. But I think they did a really good job explaining and showing it all. I don't know. I thought it was a very good keynote, despite it being over two hours, too. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, everything I thought they would talk about, they talked about... Um... Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty good. I I did notice that I used to be more excited for iPhone keynotes. Like, wow, this is the thing that defines all the phones that everybody uses now. But I I feel less inclined to feel that way now. I guess. Um, yeah, I yeah. I definitely put less effort into being excited, looking forward to, and looking at all the rumors. I'm just kind of I just kind of lay back, and then I watch it, and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I I kind of feel like that too now. We're we're growing up and we're just like it's just another year. Just yeah, another it's just phone. just another phone. Like I already have a phone. I don't need it now. It's just another iPad. I don't need another iPad. Yeah, and I think you know, many years ago when it was just only a few models had been out, mm-hmm. a new one was more significant because it was definitely maybe twenty five percent of all the models out there. But now we're at our ninth iPhone, and it's oh, can you believe that it's the ninth already? Yeah, I remember when the first when the first one was announced. I watched that keynote, I think pretty, you know, the day or two after it happened, and I was blown away. Yep. 2007, man. Mm, It's a good year. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me probably best on Twitter at Tech4789 or at TheMan4789 or my website, BrianM.me, which hasn't been touched in six months. That's fine. Or... There are other Twitter accounts too. You can follow at Morris and Weather if you're interested in seeing the weather in my college town, or go to or follow at Weather by Brian with an I, not a Y, and you will find about the weather that is going on around where I tweeted last. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. I do follow this particular Twitter bot, and I, I enjoy it. Yeah, I think it's pretty nice. Should I change it and use metric units? Please don't. I, I Every time I see that you, that it has tweeted in Fahrenheit, it's like, oh, that's Fahrenheit. I know what that means. Yeah, I, I have a mix. My my Apple Watch tells it to me in Celsius. and But my, my weather app on my Mac and my phone still use. I mean, I guess you could compromise and Fahrenheit. just report it in Kelvin. That's basically Celsius, though. I mean, it's sure it is. Shifted. Yeah, sure, yeah. But just be confusing for everyone, that's what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. And, of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter, at Ryan Amar, and, of course, on Google+, Plus, which is where I paste pictures of various outings and things. Did you post anything about kayaking today? Uh, no, I didn't even take my phone, actually, today. Um, it's probably a good call. So, uh, normally I leave it in the car when we when we take the boats out and we, we go in the water. But I didn't even bring it in the car today. I just left it at home charging. I, it's like, eh, don't care. It's fine. I don't think I've ever really done that. My my, my friend is much more brave than I. Uh, and uh, he, he took his Moto G in the boat with him. And it's like, yeah, you know, you're going to drop that right into the water, man. 
And kayaking, do you, I don't know if you're extreme kayaking or not with like the, I don't know, I've, I guess I went whitewater kayaking and they had like yeah. a sleeve that went through the boat onto you. You can't even um, use your phone at that point. But. Well, so we're, we're just on a lake and it's pretty calm here on the lakes and, um, you know, there's some splashing, but it's not too bad. You know, you, you know, your, your arms will get a little wet, but that's about it. But I just, I'm, I can't risk it. Yeah. I would, I would never bring a phone in a kayak. Well, I, I, had a I was bag right. And a floating, exactly. And an inner tube and like a, a safety light and like a, a parachute. <laughs> you know, it has to have every emergency situation, a little heater, a little air conditioner. So, so in, in the, um, iPhone seven next year, I guess one of those features will be involved. Yeah. That's yeah. the next iPhone I'm buying. So yeah. I hope so. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Uh, thanks for coming on all the way from Denmark. Thanks for having me all the way in not Denmark. I mean, it is a pretty far journey, so. And I don't know about the delay. Let's see. Can I? I'm going to I'm gonna ping you. We're going to see how, how big this delay is. What's your, what's if up, down? What, what are you pinging me on? From my terminal, from my computer. Just oh, to see the, oh, yeah. Uh, if up, down, dot com, yeah. See, when I say ping, I mean it's a communication ping, you know. It's like a Hangouts ping. Yeah. I'm getting 142 milliseconds. Oh, so you mean it's just about right? Yeah, I did a speed test. Okay, so I uh, maybe this is better for fringe, but I'll just quickly say I I had my internet was a Wi-Fi box, and by that I mean a 4G mobile hotspot that had a Wi-Fi network. But I managed to talk with someone, even though I'm a like a subleaser technically here at the building. Mm-hmm. I got their access to Ethernet, which is. Obviously faster than 100 megabit, but that's all their switches are rated for. So it's well, like the top 100 megabit, which I'm not going to complain about, but its yeah. ping was like two milliseconds to the speed test server, probably here in Copenhagen. That's funny. It's, it's good to see. Yeah, two milliseconds, that's almost too good. Yeah, but if I was in the Wi-Fi spot, you know, it'd be 150 milliseconds to the cell phone tower and everything. Yeah, right. And then another 150. This this, this yeah. video would not have been possible with with a cell hotspot connection. I'd be pulling a Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. he'll ha- he'll have to listen to this to to know about that uh, very good roast. I should probably expect like an angry tweet or something. Yeah, in like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Not it's Brandon. been good. Um, I guess we'll uh, have to talk again soon. Yeah. Have a good one. Have a good one.